I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is April 6, 2017, and in this video I'll be going over how to install Docker on Ubuntu 16.04, which is pretty much cake. And also I'm going to show how to install it on Windows, and also get how to get my SIGWIN working with the window, Windows install so I can actually, from SIGWIN, uh, do Docker commands. So with that, get going. Okay, here's the actual URL provided from Docker themselves on how to install this on Ubuntu. So you can go there, and I'm pretty much you know, I won't say copying verbatim, but pretty close because they got some more stuff in here, more information. I'm just going to go direct to the point, which is pretty short anyway. So it's pretty easy install. Uh, but go there and you can get more information. Uh, so that's with that, let's get started. So just to show you that I am on Ubuntu 16.04. So I'm on Ubuntu 16.04. So I'll do a sudo apt-get update. We'll just update things first. And then we need to install a few things. And so I'm going to do a little cut and paste here so I don't mess up anything here, but we'll hopefully pause it right there. So we need to install app transport.https, CA certificates, curl, and software properties.common, which I think are actually installed by default, but they make you want to make sure and double check this is what they suggest from uh, the Docker team. Uh, so if I hit that, yeah, I think I'm already installed. And this is a bare bones basic um, uh, uh, Ubuntu install anyway so but you probably want to double check that just in case Alexa stop okay now next thing is we actually want to add a key uh, which you can get this off their site but it might be easier to do that uh, so here I'm just uh, grabbing their key and adding it their um, a GPG key yeah. So, so that I can get access to the repository. And the next thing I got to do is get access to the repository. And they suggest running this command, which is pretty simple. So I'm adding the repository. Um, and I'm using my own LSB release to get the correct kind. And it's about the, I only, and I want stable. I don't want anything experimental. I just want the latest stable. And that should be it. So we got that. And then now I just need to um, do an update to get all that information. Okay, and then actually install it. So I have to get install docker ce, because I guess now I haven't paid much attention this last eight months. I guess there's a docker ce and a docker ee. So there's a community edition and Enterprise Edition, but I just want the Community Edition. Dash Y, just to say yes to everything. Okay, and then let it install, and it should go pretty quickly. Okay, now it's installed. Let's go run some stuff. So I can do, uh, now I've got it, so I can do sudo docker uh, run hello world. Uh, which that will pull down the hello world image and run it which I don't have it. So it's pulling it down and it ran it. And you can see, there we go. Hello from Docker. So it's working. Uh, as another really quick test, I can do sudo docker run dash p, which lets me uh, assign ports. And I'll do 808080 and nginx. So I'm going to pull down an nginx server, a web server, and assign my local port 8080 to attach to its port 80. So it'll pull down. and then it should run. There we go, so now it's actually running, but I'm not hitting it, so we're not seeing any message pop up. But now if I go over here into another terminal, and I curl, and I'm, lo I'm logged on the same machine, uh, localhost 8080, since that's what we attach it to, I hit it, I get back a page, and you can see I'm getting back information there. Uh, also, I can go over here, because it's on my local network. Let's see, one, two, See, it's a uh, 88, I think. Yeah. There we go. So I'm pulling up my Nginx there, and I can see I'm getting logs out. So yeah, so it's working just fine. Uh, so I'll kill that. Okay, so that's simple enough. That's how you install Docker and get it running on Ubuntu 16.04, which is cake. Uh, the next thing, which takes a little more thinking to do, is how do you install on Windows, which is fairly easy. 
Uh, it's a pretty good process, but how do we get into Talking Windows and how do I get it working with my Sigwin correctly so that I can uh, issue Docker commands in Sigwin? So that's the more interesting part. Okay, so how do you install this on Windows? Again, it's a little different process, a little longer, but it's not too bad to do. Uh, now the thing is, Docker is not virtualization, it's containerization, and so as such, it needs to have a Unix, a Linux underneath it to work on. Um, and Windows doesn't have one. So what do they do? Uh, they have this Docker toolbox, which they actually have for the Mac, which I prefer using that for the Mac versus their actual Docker tool currently. Uh, but the idea is we install another virtual machine that runs on Windows, and we install Docker on that, and then from the command line, you can actually talk to that virtual machine kind of seamlessly and get it to do the things you want. But you have to be aware there is another virtual machine running. Uh, so having said all that, let's download it uh, for Windows and get started. So just come to this page and then come down here and click on download. And in my case, I downloaded it yesterday, so I have this parentheses one there, but it'll work. I've uninstalled everything, so I can actually redo this again. Okay, now it's now it's downloaded, so I just click on it to run it. Simple as that. And in my case, I gotta, you know, I always ask before I run all these things, so I run it. Um, and then for me, I, un I uncheck box this because I just don't, that's just my nature. I don't like giving away a bunch of information. Uh, I don't think it's really a problem, that's just the way I am. Uh, click next, click next. Uh, now, if you haven't already installed it, you need to install Git for Windows, uh, which reminds me, I better uninstall it. Otherwise, this might mess up. Uh, let me just... Let me remove uh, Git version. Just in case, do it all fresh. Because I recall... Uh, months ago, I had to install this, and I didn't install the Git, and it became an issue, and I forget why, so out of habit, I'm going to uninstall the Git, and then checkbox Git for Windows, uh, hit Next. Uh, this is all fine with those checked as they are, and hit Next, and then Install. And it'll go through its install process, and I should get a few pop-ups here, because it also needs to install... Um, some device drivers for VirtualBox. So it's, it's actually going to download VirtualBox um, to install a virtual machine on it. So. Okay, there we go. So I believe, I, if I remember correctly, I get three of these in a row, roughly, just asking for permission to install some of these drivers. So you could click Always Trust Oracle and just click Install and you won't get them, but I tend not to do that. So I'll just click Install and wait a little bit and I should get two more of these. There's the second one. Just click Install. Ah, and finally the third one, which I think is the last one. Just click Install. Okay, there we go. We're all installed. Uh, so you can click Finish and view the shortcuts if you want. Uh, but really the only shortcuts I care about right now are the ones on the desktop. So let me minimize this. And there we go. We should see that I now have this Oracle VM, uh, this kinema uh, Kinematic Alpha, and Docker Quick Stop. You don't need to worry about the kinem Kitematic? Kit anyway, you don't need to worry about that one yet. I've fiddled with that at one point, but I haven't fiddled with it since. Uh, but you don't need to worry about it. But right now, it's all installed, but nothing, nothing's running. So if I try to do any Docker things, I'm not going to, if I go here and open a new Sigwin, you know, I go, which Docker? Um, well, I do it. Well, should, I do, the tools are installed. They're on C. And so I do have Axe in a sense, but if I do Docker PS, I'm not, can, the uh, virtual machine that will be running Docker is not running. So I just kind of get explodes. Like nothing, nothing's working now. The tools are there, but it's not connecting to the machine because the machine's not running. Uh, so to run it, uh, you can use your Docker Quick Start. So just double click on that, open that guy up. And what this will do is it will create uh, the virtual machine if it doesn't exist. And if it does exist, it'll start it up. So the first time you do this, it may take a second because it's got to get it all set up correctly. And I believe the second time you do it, it'll go much faster because the machine will have existed. 
Um, but it's not that long a process, as I recall. Uh, but also, once it's done, you'll actually have a terminal here that you can actually run Docker commands in here if you want to, uh, which I don't want to, but we, uh, we can show you that it can. And there we go. So now it's all installed and the virtual machine's running. You can see it gives you some information here. So it's running locally, me, locally for me on 192.168.99100. And so from here, I can actually issue some commands. You know, I can say docker uh, run it, hello world. And it should pull it down and run it. And now it's actually pulling it down on the virtual machine. I'm just kind of connecting to it through here. Um, but I don't really want to run it here. I'd rather run it on my SIGWIN because I don't want to have this open all the time. But now if I go over here, now that it's running, I still can't get access to it because even though it is running, I haven't set it up to the um, environmental variables to default to connect to it. So there's a couple ways to do that. Uh, one way, which is a little more heavy handed, you can do Docker machine environment, ENV. And this will list some things that you should export. And so I could go over here and export them by hand in my SIGWIN or put them in a bash script or, or my bash profile, or my profile, and it would, could automatically do it. Uh, which would work in most cases, but the thing I worry about is the potential that my IP could change. Uh, because if I reboot my machine, I'm not necessarily going to get that same host IP. I think I will, but I'm not for sure. So an easier way to do that is you can do... Um, I do have access to it over here. So I can go Docker... I think I can do Docker machine environment from here, right? Yeah, so I could do it from here. But a simpler way is just do eval and do docker machine environment default. There we go. And that'll pull that information in. And so now I should be able to do docker ps uh, docker run hello world. And there we go, so it ran. Uh, and then I can come back here now that I know it's running, I can kill this. So if I kill that, the machine's still running, everything's just fine. So I can be over here from my SIGWIN running things just fine, not a problem. I mean, the SIGWIN is running the uh, the Windows scripts, but that's, you know, how it's kind of working. Um, but there you go. So there I am around Windows. So lastly, I'm going to go over a little bit of cleanup I need to do to make sure that it's going to be fine and working when I reboot. Okay, a little bit of cleanup. So if I go over here and I open up the virtual box, I can see that that machine, you can see the machine here it made and then it's running. And so I can use VirtualBox like you would normally want to use VirtualBox. Um, so you could do some things in here and I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm not a VirtualBox guy. I'm sure I could set this up so that this will restart when I restart my machine. Uh, but I don't want to. So I'm going to leave things as is. And so when I reboot my machine, if I were to open up uh, VirtualBox, this would not be running. So what I've decided to do as my go-to is I'm just going to leave things as is and that if I should reboot my machine, I'm going to use this Docker quick start to reinitiate the machine, the Docker machine. That's going to be my methodology. And I think that's a fine way to do it because I don't want my virtual machine. I don't need my Docker machine running locally all the time. In fact, I'm probably rarely going to use it, but I want it to be there. Uh, mostly I'll be using an Ubuntu server somewhere else, but in case I need it, I've got it, right? Um, so that's my decision. Other, other, you can probably do other things. But one thing I do want to do is I need to always go, um, I could do that and then run this every time I, I rebooted or had a new terminal, but I'm not going to remember that. So I'm, I'm going to just make a alias. So in my case, I got bash, um, I'm going to edit my bash profile, which I think I've already edited on this machine. I'm going to come down here and I don't want to evaluate it all the time, uh, which I could do if I was gonna have my machine start all the time, which I don't. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little alias in here that just says start docker, because I'm not gonna remember this off the top of my head. So I'm gonna make a little alias called start docker that's gonna run that. So I'm gonna put that in there, save it, and then if I open a new terminal, uh, I should say here's what I would do. Let's say I've rebooted my machine and everything is turned off. So I would at first do is I'd come here and I would run the Docker Quick Start, which you're safe running. It. You can run it again and again. It's not a problem. Because really what it will do is it will start the machine if it doesn't there, if it's not there. Um, I should say it will create the machine if it's not there. 
And then if the machine is shut down, it will start it. So, and then it will give you this interactive shell, which I don't want. So I can always just run this and then kill it. And then in my case, come over here, make an open new terminal and say start Docker. I'll get the correct evaluation. And now I just got my Docker tools. So I can say Docker run, uh, we'll do that port thing again. 8080 in Gen X. And so it should pull it down on the server and run it. And this is not running in an Nginx, it's all running on that virtual server. So I just I have connections into it. It's kind of a slick system. Okay, are we completed yet? Let's see, are you running yet? Uh, Localhost. It's not running yet. I think I goobered something up here. So let me run that. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, because it's running on the other box. I'm kind of being stupid, huh? I guess that's something to consider. So it's actually, it's running on that server. So that's a good, no duh. Uh, I think it was 99, 100. So there's a thing to consider. So if you're doing little tests like that, it's not really running your local host. It's actually running over there. So, uh, yeah, that was kind of stupid of me. Okay. So there's one of the asks. Okay, so it's, it's out there running. So now I get to do uh, Docker PS. And now I got both of those over there. So it's Docker kill. Uh, it's been a while. Um, ah, anyway, I'll go kill those. But anyway, that's something to consider because whenever you're running those, it's actually not running on your local host. It's running on that other machine. So you better be aware of that, which is a good thing to know. But anyway, so that's, uh, how do you, in that's how you install Docker on Ubuntu 16.04, which is cake. And that's also how you install uh, it on Windows and how you easily get it working with Sanguine. So, there's, all, there's a little few gotchas in there, but, you know, overall, on Windows, not too bad. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username patmandenver. Or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.